I once held a human brain in my hands, and I found it unimaginable that, alive, it had contained the imagination of someone else. And not just the imagination, but the thoughts, memories, emotions, drives, intellect, dreams, everything that made that person who she or he was. Learning that the human brain also contains billions of nerve cells communicating through tens of trillions of interconnections didn't make matters any better. For me, the unimaginable now became the incomprehensible. But the fact is that while the human brain's most daunting intellectual challenge will probably always be contemplating itself, neuroscience is closing in on how from the human brain emerges the human mind. One approach has been to examine other simpler creatures whose brains have been evolving as long as ours, but have been honing other often astonishing skills. We've learned much about learning from the fruit fly and from the honeybee with its extraordinary navigational skills, or the jumping spider able to plot its approach to its prey, or from invertebrates like the sea hare or plesia which has provided insights into the molecules involved in laying down new memories. And even the octopus. A few years ago in Naples, I looked on in astonishment as this one learned how to open a jar to get at a crab after watching just once another octopus perform the same trick. From rats and mice whose brains we can probe and record from, whose neurons we can study under the microscope, we've gained new insights into the way brains grow and develop. We've learned how dependent brains are on the environment in which their owners live, and we've begun to tease apart the contributions of both genes and environment to the growing brain. And with the help of selfless human volunteers, an arsenal of brain scanning machines from electroencephalograms to magnetoencephalograms and more functional MRIs than I care to remember, have helped illuminate what parts of the brain do what, when. One of my favorite brain regions is the hippocampus. You have no space around it. That looks, that's good. Very plump. Yeah. I'm quite impressed. The hippocampus is involved not only in filing away memories, but also in finding our way around. Imaging studies are also revealing vital clues about how the human mind deteriorates in diseases such as Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. The scientific literature and popular television programs are full of examples of the cognitive skills of our closest relatives and how we share 99% of our DNA with our chimpanzee cousin. Yet the fact remains that there is a profound difference between the human brain and all others. The great challenge facing neuroscience is teasing out from our own minds what sets them apart. One place to start is in the developing human brain as it grows its most important asset the cerebral cortex. It's in the exquisite choreography of neurons migrating into position in the cerebral cortex that human uniqueness begins to reveal itself as the neurons track along pathways that don't exist in other mammals or even other primates. Another uniquely human attribute is our facility with language, which emerges within the developing brain. How do we put together words with meaning? How much does our understanding of the world depend on language? We think in words. Could we think without them? Yeah. Perhaps the most exceptional human quality is our connectedness with other humans. There are many other social creatures, but none comes close to our dependence on being embedded from birth in a rich and enriching skein of social relationships. Hello. How are our brains wired to account for social interactions? We're getting early clues by studying the genes of people with exaggerated social affect, such as individuals with Williams syndrome. Are you Scott? I'm Scott. How, How are you? Are you? So are you? Nice, nice to see nice you. Nice to meet you. How are you? You were the How best in uh, math, I'll tell you that. Oh, thank you. Were the you. best doctor in math I've ever seen. <laughs> we're also learning from the brains of people whose social capacity is severely diminished, such as those on the autism spectrum. The question before neuroscience now is whether with all the tools available for probing the brain, we can begin to understand how, through both genes and experience, our minds are molded to function within a society of other minds. In short, can neuroscience tell us what it is to be human? <laughs>